Hello there everyone, and uh, today we're gonna tie uh, a small nymph. It's called the Copper John, which is a very classic and very, very uh, proven pattern. Uh, as always, you can find the complete material list for this fly on my website. It's nordicanglers.com. There you can buy the materials also, and if you haven't done so already, it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe to the channel. Without further ado then, then let's get tying. So, here it is, a small copper joint, and uh, well, let's, without further ado, let's just get tying. The first thing we need is, of course, a hook, and for this I'm going to use an Arex. Uh, this is the uh, the curved nymph in Bartless. There, it's called FW541, and I like the Bartless hooks for my for my freshwater trout flies um, and and grayling flies. This is a nice fly for grayling as well. I just need to find one here. <laughs> <laughs> the hook is a hook to hook. Um, and then we need to find a gold bead. And uh, and for this we want something to... to uh, you can use a, a tungsten if you like, or or you can simply use just use a small uh, gold head. Um, this was maybe a bit too big, I'm gonna go for one that is a bit smaller. Um, it's it all depends on on how deep you want this to fish, but also on uh, on uh, on on uh, on what will look good uh, on on the fly. So I took one that was fairly smaller. Um, uh, this is a size eight hook, which is fairly large for for this type of fly. But the reason why I'm I'm doing it on on a size eight is because it's easier for you to actually see. This will be a well working fly all the way down to size fourteen, maybe. Um, and uh, and of course uh, some of the stuff here you you need to adjust if, if you're if you're doing it in, in smaller sizes. So the first thing we'll need is some uh, some some goose bites or, or turkey bites. Those are well <laughs> close to close to uh, very similar. Let's just say then in the brown. I'm gonna take two of these and these are gonna be the tail of the fly. Um, and 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 we tie these so they. So they will be pointing out behind uh, the uh, the hook here, and and it's very important to tie them on the sides of the hook. Let's see if oh they're not even, not at all close to even in length. We're gonna pull both of those off and redo this part. Oh, we're just gonna leave one off to the side there, and then I'm gonna do this. So, so take care when you tie these down; they're on the side of the hook, and uh, and uh, and and pointing pointing uh, backwards, and that they have the same uh, the same length. I don't think it's it's well it's not that crucial for the trout, but it's crucial for how the fly looks, and uh, and the better the fly looks in your in your in your box, the more likely it is that that's going to be the fly that you use on on any given day. At least that's <laughs> how it is with me. The the better the fly looks, the better the the as, as you can see there, it's uh, they're they're pointing in in. Uh, in, in opposite directions, they're sticking out from underneath the uh, hook. Just gonna tie them a bit further down the hook shank here to give this fly a bit more body. So you see, like this. Okay, then we need to tie down the uh, the, the the copper wire that's gonna use for this. I'm not gonna use the ultra wire in large because this is fairly fairly nice uh, and and big size. And uh, and uh, I really want to point out and and show you that this ultra wire is really really an awesome awesome product even for salmon and sea trout flies. It comes in a great great number of different uh, colors and uh, and and sizes. It's uh, there is a small which of course is the smallest. Then there is a BR. I don't know exactly what BR is is uh, stands for, but but that's the middle size. Then there's a medium, and then only in copper we have the large, which is which is the one I'm going to use here. And um, in order to get this fly to be looking good, uh, the key thing element here is to tie down the copper wire on top of the hook, just straight on top of the hook, all the way up. Towards the um, the all the way up over the body here, just simply tie this completely straight on top of the hook. If you do do this, then you will have a very even body, and this even body will make it 
easy for you or, or manageable for you to actually have a, a body that is gonna have um, uh, that's gonna be very smooth and and the turns of your copper wire when you turn this for the body is gonna make this fly um, uh, more um, look look better because it will be uh, you will be able to actually to actually turn the copper wire and and not have any room in between the turns that is that is the most crucial element of this fly in order to get this fly to to look good is to have no no room between the turns of the of the copper wire as you can see i've done a lot of uh, i've done a lot uh, of 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 building up with the tying thread that's also why i've chosen a 50 dinya um vivus gps thread that's simply to make sure that i have a a smooth but uh, but fairly uniform uh, body here made up of the tying thread because otherwise when I turn the, the copper wire now uh, it would be impossible for me to make a nice looking body. Really need to, to use some, some force here and then turn this really really just right on top of every other turn so you don't get any any room in between here and if I had a if I had had a lumpy but, uh, body then uh, this would not uh, have been possible for me to 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 make the body uh, look good and have no spacing in between the individual turns of the uh, of the copper wire here which is a very very crucial uh, uh, element of making this fly actually look any good I'm gonna stop here and if you notice then I have quite a, f a lot more I could tie on but I'm not gonna do that this is gonna be covered in uh, this is gonna be covered in dubbing anyway so it's not that that important but I'm gonna stop there because since I have the gold head then if if I don't stop uh, fairly fairly long from the gold head then my fly will not have a sufficiently long uh, wing case to actually look uh, look good so basically, there you have. It. You can see how smooth the copper wire is. I'm very pleased with that. That looks um, as it should. And now we need to do the the wing case. And for the wing case, uh, we're gonna do. Uh, as I've seen this fly with a lot of different stuff, but uh, I'm gonna do it with uh, with a Mirage tinsel in opal. And um, basically, I'm just gonna take 40 centimeters of this, and then I'm gonna double it, uh, and double it, and double it again. So I get kind of, I think, eight, eight layers of this. If I had had a, a, a size large, this was just the medium that I have laying around. If I had a large, then I wouldn't have been, a, wouldn't have had to to do all of this. But I didn't want to, you know, break in a completely new roll just to make this fly. So I just used whatever I had, like this, and then, then that's gonna be nice and uh, and. Where that's supposed to go? One of these is a bit annoying, but yeah. Then uh, in the original pattern, it's it's peacock curls you use for this, but I'm gonna use peacock colored uh, ice dubbing instead. That's fairly easy to work with. It's a nice material. It's it's nice and shiny, and uh, and it is it's gonna look very similar, but it's it's just it's just easier to handle, easier to work with. So that's why I decided to go with with that. Basically, I just build a thorax now. It's gonna have about the same thickness. You see, like that. You can see how similar that is to to actual to actual peacock curls. And then we need a a, a front hackle. And um, in the original pattern, it has to be a partridge. But partridge full skins, uh, full full, is just very hard to come by. So uh, so what I've done is is I'm, I've I've started to substitute all my partridge uh, for all my all my flies with with whiting brahma. Uh, hens and these have very very similar striations and markings on the feathers they are very 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 nice looking and also there is a tremendous amount of of hackles on uh, on there and uh, and um, and uh, the price is even uh, less than for the partridge skin so so basically you get a lot of material for your money and uh, and uh, and these are easier to come by uh, and and the supply will not dry out so if if you're in need of of partridge then you can uh, you can rest easy and uh, and go buy a a, a whiting brahma truly truly awesome product again um, from from whiting 
Whiting is just <laughs> awesome in any in 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 every every single way. So, gonna turn this. We don't want this hackle to be too dense or too big. Just gonna have a look at. I think that's about it. I'm gonna tie this down here. Gonna cut the heckle off. Gonna fold the feathers, here the, the heckle fibers, onto the sides, and then I'm gonna pull the thorax here, the 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 opal flesh here. I'm gonna pull that across the uh, heckle to make sure that the heckle is in line and it's, you see, like this. I'm gonna cut that off. Gonna make my whip finish. Everything is looking out, working out very, very well. It looks good. No problem so far. And then, as the finishing touch for this, you want to add a bit of uh, a bit of uh, a bit of glue to to the to the thorax of this. So I'm just gonna add some loon, uh, some uh, some UV curing glue here on top. I don't know why that is. If it's supposed to look like a, a an air bubble or something like that, I don't know the story about that. But but it's 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 one of the things that that is important and and that makes this fly uh, be what it is. So I'm gonna add some of the the glue. The glue here will also help to keep your hackle in line to 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 strengthen your fly to make it last for a lot more fish, and it also gives it a it's a nice shine. So. Added some UV glue to to the top of the fly here, and then basically uh, we're done. The small uh, the small nymph here, uh, great in size. Uh, well, eight to I would say fourteen, something like that. Um, it's it's not a difficult pattern, but it's not the easiest uh, pattern out there either. But it's a fly that has been fished for many many years, and that really really has been proven time and time again. So so a classic nymph pattern that works well. Fishes will it gets down deep because of all the the copper wire and the beat, and of course you can do it with tungsten or or, or just a, a brass bead, whatever you you prefer. But um, a nice looking small fly. Those were the words today. Uh, as uh, as always, uh, remember to subscribe to the channel if you liked it, and also you can find the full uh, complete material list at material kit on uh, my website. It's nordicangler dot uh, dot com. And uh, otherwise, all there's left to say is uh, good luck. Uh, good luck out on the water, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.